everyone. Welcome to Loper Report. I am Cannon Rath. And I'm Grant Ty. We are here at Harmon Park where the women's tennis team just got done with practice. But first, let's go to football as the Lopers were on the road this week to take on Fort Hay State with their undefeated record. They suffer their first loss to the Tigers after leading 21 to nothing at the half. Let's roll right into the highlights. UNK hit the road to Fort Hayes this last Saturday to take on the Fort Hayes State Tigers at Lewis Stadium in Hayes, Kansas. To kick things off, you're going to see Damian Cerns here. He's going to bounce to the right, and he's going to get brought down for about a gain of eight on his first attempt. On this play, Davis is going to look to throw. Still looking, going deep right here for Kylan Herrera, making the grab into the end zone for UNK's first point on the touchdown right there. And then Fort Hayes is going to run the ball here. That right there is Blake Schroeder with a man on his back making the tackle on that play. Later on in the quarters, you're going to see here a nice little trickery play as it's going to be a flea flicker from Steely to Davis. He's going to roll. He's going to sling that one up there. And guess what? It's going to be caught there by Cody Nelson. Beautiful play by the Lopers. We continue on here. Only three yards from the end zone. It's going to be a quarterback keeper. And guess what? TJ runs it up the gut. And he scores a touchdown to make it 14 0 in favor of UNK. Chance Fuller on this play, going to get the snap. He's going to hand it to Kylan Chapman. Chapman going to be wrapped up here by Tell Spees for the tackle early in the second quarter. And then on this play, Davis is going to fake the handoff, going to let the throw, going to evade out pressure, throw a quick one right here. That's Dane Seeley for a big gain. 15 10, going to be pushed out here at about the eight yard line. On the very next play here, you're going to see TJ Sands, a man in motion. He's going to hand this off to Damian Cern. Cern is going to bounce to the right. He's going to cut in there. He dives. And is he in? Yes, he's in. Touchdown, UNK to make it 21-0 in favor of UNK. Chance Fuller going to get the snap here on this one. He's going to throw short to Hunter Budkey, who is immediately stuffed right there on third down by Seth Holt and Amir Abdullah bringing up fourth down. Not much time left in the first half. Ten seconds, Fuller gets the snap. He drops. He's going to try to roll back the pressure there by UNK. You got a couple lopers there. He's going to stop. He's about the 40. He's going to sling it over in the corner. It's going to be caught there by Hunter Budkey. One-on-one -on -one there. He's going to drop. He hits the pylon. Is he in? No, he's not. As you're going to see here in the replay, his elbow hits the ground before he crosses the pylon, and the twins do not count. On this play, though, Fuller in the second half as UNK up 21 to nothing here. He's going to complete this pass. That is Bud Key again, and this time he gets into the end zone for the touchdown for the Tigers. Here on this play, Davis. Wilper's looking to respond. He's going to give it to Dane Seeley. Seeley finds a hole around that left side across midfield, and he's going to be tackled inside the 35-yard line on that one. Following the next play here, Davis in the shotgun formation. He's going to receive it. He's going to do this little fake. He's going to look over in the corner, and it's going to be caught there by Michael Cook to give UNK another touchdown. And what a dime to Cook there by Davis. Continue on here. You're going to see trips in the near side, two on the far, far side. Empty backfield, four chance Fuller. Fuller's going to drop. He's going to look. That's going to be caught there by Alex Schremer. At the five, he dives, and what are they going to call him? They're going to call him in. Touchdown, Fort Hayes. And what a play there by the Tigers. Wilper's looking to respond once again here, up by two touchdowns. This is Montrez Jackson around the right side, across midfield now, cuts it back to the left. He's inside the 35, 30, 25, and down at the 20 for a 38-yard gain right there. And then later on in the drive, Davis going to take the snap, just going to keep this one up the gut, makes a man miss into the end zone for the 11-yard touchdown to give the Wilpers the 21-point lead. Continue on the game here. It's going to be Kylan Chapman. He's going to receive this one. He's going to cut the middle. Gets a man free. He's at the 15 10 5, but he's brought down at the 8 there by Darius Swanson with the shoestring tackle. On the next play, you're going to see Fuller. He's going to fake. He's going to get pressure. He throws in. That's going to be caught in the corner by Manny Ramsey for the touchdown. Backup quarterback Voshan Waiters into the game now after an injury by Chance Fuller. He's going to look to throw. Here in the fourth quarter, he's got his man right there. That is Hunter Budke for another touchdown for Fort Hayes State as they bring the game within a score. Looking to do it again. Chance Fuller back in the game now. He's going to look to rush this one. Makes a man miss. Dives into the end zone. Is he in? They are going to say short at the one right there, which sets up the game-tying touchdown. A play later. Here, Waiters, he's going to take the snap. He's going to give it 
to Kylan Chapman up the middle, and we have a tie game. Fort Hayes State ties this one up. Late here in the fourth quarter, it is UNK, Davis, and Seeley in the backfield. Davis receives a little fake hand off there to Seeley. He's going to roll to his left. He's going to sling it up there, but Joe's stiff in there with the catch. He needs to be brought down for about a gain of 10. Later in the fourth quarter, Kylan Chapman's going to receive the handoff, and he's going to break. Cuts up the middle. He's got green grass, and he's going to be brought out at the one by Darius Swanson. And boy, oh boy, what a run by Chapman. Chapman is going to look to finish this one off here. As man 12 on that clock, he's going to get the ball handoff from four. Wilper's trying to stuff it, but he's able to plow into the end zone right there. Fort Hayes takes their first lead of the ball game with a minute seven left. And then TJ Davis, final drive, 24 seconds on the clock, just looking and hoping for something. He's going to let this one go. It's going to be intercepted right there by Devin White. And Fort Hayes State would get the win in this one, 42 to 35. Here are some of the final stats. Montrez Jackson had a career high in rushing yards with 102 off of nine attempts. Davis was 12 for 15 with 202 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. He also had 96 yards on 23 carries. The Lopers were balanced with receiver touches, but Cody Nelson led the team with two catches for 48 yards. On defense, the Lopers were led by Darius Swanson with 11 total tackles. Blake Bubach ended up with eight, and Zach Schlager finished the night with six. The football team will be back in action against Missouri Western State this Saturday at home for homecoming. The UNK women's soccer team was looking to get their first MIAA win this last weekend against Newman University. With the game tied 1-1 in the second overtime, here's Cammie Davis with the corner kick right off the head of Angelina Ayaka for the golden goal as the Lopers would get their first MIAA win of the season. The Lopers have been plagued with injuries this season, as you can see a few of them hobbling out there to celebrate with their team. UNK lost to Central Oklahoma on Saturday 3-0. Here's what head coach Chloe Roberts had to say after the game against the Broncos to recap the weekend. Um, they're a really great team. We knew that coming in. You know, we're coming off the back of a really good win against Newman uh, where we went into overtime. Bit of heavy legs. Um, we try to rotate as much as possible, but that's a really quality team right there. Um, they're regionally ranked and will probably be nationally ranked um, this next week for a reason. Um, they cause us a lot of problems. I think a total of 12 uh, to 14 players have had some form of injury where they've missed a few games and we've been managing minutes to get them back in. So it's been a little bit interesting with our rotation and our consistency, uh, but we're a never give up team. We're never give up coaches and we're going to continue that way uh, throughout the year and whatever cards were dealt. Uh, overall, we came out healthy, you know, one-on-one -on, -one on the weekend. Um, you know, I would have, would have took that if you told that to me at the beginning of the week. Um, but again, it's great to compete with these great teams, very well coached UCO team that are going to do really well. And um, it's great to put our players up against that. And now we look forward to the next weekend games. The Upper women's soccer team will be back in action this weekend against Northwest Missouri State on Friday and then Missouri Western State on Sunday. Both games at Foster Field. You can catch them on the MIAA network if you're not able to make it to them. The UNK tennis team concluded their fall season. They went 3-0 in their matches and performed well at the Blue Jay Invitational in the ITA Central Regionals. We caught up with head coach Scott Schaefer and uh, freshman Alexis Bernthal from Boulder, Colorado about their fall season. The UNK tennis team is still hitting the clay to prepare for their spring season to stay active even though their fall season is over. The program currently has five international student athletes playing for the team. The recruiting process for international student athletes runs at a different pace than recruiting within the states. Recruiting internationals has become easier every year. Um, there's so many international men and women interested in coming to the states to get an education and to play tennis. Um, so a lot of them make videos of them on the court and oftentimes they have agents and the agents do all the legwork for them. They, they pay them some money um, and they identify the schools that would be a possibly a good fit for them and I receive emails, I receive messages from different agents who want to tell me about a certain player and then just like online shopping I wade through them and um, when I really narrow in on someone I'm interested I, I ask a lot more questions of the student athlete themselves as well as the agent really pour through their results and and try to give myself the very best picture of their level before they arrive 
Um, I think I do a pretty good job. The international student athletes make up half the Lopers roster. Freshman Alexis Bernthal from Boulder, Colorado has been playing really well this fall for UNK. I knew she was a very dedicated and skillful player. Um, and she, she's been great. She's been absolutely great. She's a great teammate. Um, and her level of play is where I thought it was. Um, I, we're going to work on some doubles with her. Um, but I, I know she's not even close to her ceiling. And, and, and that's what you want from a freshman is someone who you, you can see they still have an opportunity to get better. And, and that makes it very exciting. Lexi has had good success early on in her collegiate career. During the Blue Jay Inventational, she took down two Creighton players and a player from UNO. Yeah, um, it was really cool because I actually talked to the Creighton and UNO coaches too, and they didn't want me. So um, going back and beating their players, that was really cool. Um, and it was awesome because um, I got coaching on the court for the first time when you're coming up through the junior program. Um, you're not allowed to have coaching on court and in college you're allowed to have coaching and having coach Schaefer coach me has been really cool. The transition from Bernthal from Boulder to Kearney has received a positive reaction. I have really liked it so far. Yeah, um, I think the people are great. Um, my RA is great. My advisor is great. The, my coach is great. Um, my professors are great. Uh, all the people have been super helpful and I think that's made the transition just so much easier. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Lopers only played a spring season last school year. This year, the Lopers will be back to their normal routine with a split season. Coach Schaefer explained how they used the fall season to their advantage. You know, we take kind of a layered approach to prepare for the spring season. Um, for the next few months, fresh off a of competition. It absolutely is addressing the things that I don't think we do very well. Um, and then as we move towards December into January, then the focus then shifts back to what do we do well and, and let, let's keep working on that so we feel confident going into matches. And then, you know, in a perfect world, they play their best tennis, yet at times when they have to use the things that they weren't very good at, that they can do that because that makes them better competitors. The Lopers finished their fall season 3-0. and They will use the off-season months to get ready for their loaded spring schedule, which will begin February 12th when they take on Harding University in Springfield, Missouri. The Loper volleyball team was back in action this weekend against Northwest Missouri State. They lost that game in four sets, but they came back on Saturday and dominating Missouri Western State. Here are the highlights. Jump in the highlights here, 14-10. You're going to see Emerson Sizer. They're going to get set up, and guess what? It's CC Beam with a kill coming back from injury. 21-13 here later in the first set. That's Brianna Jones. Maddie Squires with a set, and Sammy Mock with the kill to bring the score to 22-13. to Later on here, it's going to go back to what Jensen Rouse is there for. We're going to get set up here, and guess what? They're going to kill on the right side, and that's a kill for Emerson Siza. Lopers win first set, 25-14. to Here late in the second set, Lopers down by two. Emerson Siza to serve. Her first serve is going to be mishandled by Missouri Western. She's going to have a second one. Another mishandled by Missouri Western. Game tied here in the second set at 24. And then Siza with her third straight serve. Third straight ace on that miscommunication right there. 25-24 Lopers. The Griffins get set. They're going to send it over. Nice play there by Emerson Siza to keep the play alive. Griffins are going to punch it over, but Brianna Jones is there for it. Maddie Squires to Anna Squires. It's going to be a kill for UNK. Lopers win the second set, 26-24. Here in the third set, Lopers up 6 to nothing. The Griffins just going to get this one over as it will be kept alive by Bailey Sterling. Maddie Squires to CC Beam for the kill. 7-0 Lopers in the third set. 24-8. Griffins are going to attack that far side. It's going to be blocked in the front there by Sterling and Mock. Lopers win set 3, 25-8, and win the match 3-0. Here are the final stats. Emerson Siza led the team with 12 kills and 3 service aces. Maddie Squires led in assists with 34, and Brianna Jones ended the match with 15 digs. The Lopers were also in action this last Tuesday against the Fort Hayes State Tigers. They won the match in three sets. They will be taking on Central Missouri Friday night on the road, and then they will also be on the road at Washburn on Tuesday. That's going to wrap up this week's Loper Report. A special thank you to the MIAA Network for providing this week's footage. As always, you can follow them on Twitter at the MIAA Network. 
For the Welper Report, I'm Grant Ty. And I'm Cannon Rath. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode.